afternoon everyone and welcome to ARB's webinar this afternoon. Of course we'll be covering an introduction to the Australian National Risk Assessment Model that many of you will, will probably know better as AMRAM actually. Thank you very much for your time and before we commence the presentations I will just run through the usual housekeeping items. Our presenters today are Lisa Steinmetz and of course Chris Urowicz of Arb Group, both of whom have had a very significant and a pivotal role in the development of AMRAM, so we're very pleased that they could join us to present today. And my name is Angela Juhas, I'll be your friendly webinar moderator today and if you do have any webinar or in fact training related inquiries, please do feel free to contact me at any time. Now as I said a few housekeeping items to get us started. The webinar will be approximately 40 minutes in length with a bit, uh, 20 minutes left for questions. Please do get your questions through to us throughout the presentation ladies and gentlemen because it does make it more interactive and enjoyable for yourselves. We are also recording today's webinar and all of you here today will be sent a link to the recording as well as a copy of the presentation material. A few features of the GoToWebinar system for those of you using it first time. Uh, we have the questions box. Now this is how we ask you to communicate with the presenters today. So if you've got a question or a comment, please do type away. If the presenters ask you to raise your hand at any point, then it's that little hand icon that we're referring to. Now without further ado, I will introduce our wonderful presenters today. As I said, Lisa Steinitz and Chris Urowicz of Arb Group. Lisa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank Do you, you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, your role with respect to ANRAM? Hello everyone, I'm glad you could join us for today's webinar. Um, I've been the project manager for the second phase of this ANRAM project and I've worked with the team here at Arb, including Chris of course, in the development of ANRAM. And now we're working with road agencies to help them with trials and implementation of the system. Chris. Uh, my name is Chris Jurovic. Uh, I was looking after the project in its first phase. Uh, I was um, doing a lot of background research and developed the, the principles be, behind ANRAM and a lot of the, uh, the, the sort of theoretical detail. And now uh, Lisa and I are jointly working on implementation and trials. Fantastic. Well, it's great to have you both here. Do you want to tell me a little bit about uh, some of the highlights of the project? Chris, perhaps you can start us off, I perhaps think, finishing it. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. um, I think the highlights would have been the, the enthusiasm of the Australian jurisdictions, the, the road agencies that um, came along uh, on this journey, and also the, uh, the great uh, assistance and help we got from, uh, from ARAP and OSRAP representatives. Lisa, do you have anything to add? I was going to say, I'd like to yeah, iterate, reiterate what uh, Chris's sentiments and um, it's been a real collaboration this project and that's been yeah, a real, real, real enjoyment. Absolutely, it's uh, to try and enjoy at the moment I hear. So I'm sure everyone is uh, very excited to learn more and I'll let you uh, get on with your presentation today, so thank you. Okay, so uh, today's webinar is an information session providing an introduction to the Australian National Risk Assessment Model and the webinar has a number of sections that we're going to cover today which are outlined in this slide um, and as uh, we've said Chris and I are going to be covering these. But before we get into the presentation part of the webinar we thought we'd kick things off with a poll and our first poll question for today is what do you know about ANRAM? There are a number of responses that you can choose from and Angela is going to provide some instructions on how to go about answering. Absolutely. And to those of you who haven't uh, attended a go-to webinar before, you'll see a blue pop-up box on your screen. And if you could just choose your appropriate uh, answer choice, those results will come through at our end. And I can see many of you have used the program before because just about everybody has voted, which is fantastic. So I might just close those poll results off and thank you for getting involved. I'll share the results with you all. 
And so presenters, 52% uh, of our audience today said that um, they, know, they know some but interested in learning more. Um, and many others, 36% were uh, say they know almost nothing. So this is really great. This is a clean slate opportunity to, um, to let them know a little bit more. That's fantastic and that's exactly why we're here today. So, what is ANRAM? ANRAM is the Australian National Risk Assessment Model uh, and it's a tool to identify the risk of severe crashes on a road network. It's also an analysis tool to help understand the sources of those risks and it's also a decision support tool to help uh, development of programs in addressing those risks. ANRAM provides a consistent model that can be used across Australia and it uses Australian crash data as well as speed and traffic volume data. It's intended for all road agencies at state and local government levels and it uses a proactive approach to road safety through risk assessment based on road features and traffic. It also supports the more traditional reactive approach by incorporating historical severe crash data. ANRAM strongly supports the objectives of the safe system approach by focusing on fatal and serious injury crashes. And I'd also like to mention that ANRAM was developed as part of an Austroids research project and involved strong collaboration between Austroids, the Australian Automobile Association, IRAP, OSRAP and ARB. ANRAM, this ANRAM project is nearing final endorsement by Austroids who funded the development of ANRAM and it's currently available to state and local road agencies for trial. A number of agencies are currently trialling ANRAM and we encourage others who may be interested in a trial to get in contact with us. Future broader access across the wider industry is something to be considered and directed by the ANRAM governance group and the technical working groups. Now I'm just going to provide a little bit of context. context. So why, have we, why has ANRAM been developed? The tra traditional approach to identifying crash risk is through crash history, for instance through black spot programs. However, the safe system approach establishes an ethical position that no one should die or be seriously injured on the road. To fulfil this vision, there's a requirement to identify parts or segments of the road network that require treatment. <clears throat> Given that human error may occur at any time on the network and that human tolerance to impact forces may be exceeded on many sections of the network, a proactive approach to assessing and managing road safety risk helps achieve progress towards a safe system vision. ARB has developed two tools to help practitioners proactively assess and manage risk. ANRAM takes a network level view to identify and treat roads with a high crash risk and this is what we are discussing today. While the Road Safety Risk Manager focuses on site level assessments. If you're interested in further information about Road Safety Risk Manager, just visit ARB's website. As I mentioned on the previous slide, the tr traditional approach has been to identify crash risks through crash history. However, we know that black spots are diminishing over time. In addition, only a third of fatal crashes occur at black spots and more than half of fatal crashes occur at new locations, that is locations where no previous crash has been recorded. The black spot approach needs strong crash patterns and focuses on locations that experience high crash frequencies. Therefore, there's limited opportunity to treat crashes that may be dispersed across a network, for instance, on local or rural roads that tend to experience fewer black spots. The safe system approach focuses on reducing fatal and serious injury crash risk, <clears throat> and because of the focus on these severe crashes, there is less data to investigate compared to when using all casualty data, as the incidence of fatal and serious injury crashes are much less than lower severity crashes. These severe crashes are also less likely to cluster and will tend to be more scattered and random across the network. Therefore, it's been recognised that a more systematic approach is needed. The risk assessment approach is systematic and can be applied across a whole route or network. It can be used to identify locations that are at a high risk of severe crashes occurring irrespective of the previous crash history. This information can be then used to inform and prioritise safety treatment programs. There's still a need for both approaches with, risk assessment, with the risk assessment approach applicable for low volume networks which are likely to have fewer and scattered crashes through to the higher volume networks. For roads with a high crash incidence, the risk assessment approach is not so necessary and the traditional crash investigation techniques are appropriate. 
Now, the emerging need for a proactive approach has been recognised for quite some time. Crash risk assessment has been undertaken since the 1980s, for instance, through road safety audits. Austroids has investigated in further research in this area in order to get a better understanding of crash risk and also gain confidence in application. The need for a crash risk assessment approach has also been recognised in Australia in the current Australian National Road Safety Strategy, with its first actions noting that the ANRAM is to be completed and then the highest volume roads to be assessed and then prioritised for safety improvement. Development of ANRAM also involved collaboration with a number of road safety partners, including Austroads, ARB, the Australian Automobile Association, IRAP and OSRAP. And so I just wanted to spend a moment introducing OSRAP. IRAP and within Australia, OSRAP are strong advocates for the risk assessment approach. OSRAP is the Australian Automobile, sorry, OSRAP is the Australian Road Assessment Program run by the Australian Automobile Association and state and territory motoring clubs. It is part of IRAP, which is the International Road Assessment Program. One of its key outputs is star ratings, which reflect the road safety risk of road design elements. A risk score is created based on the road design elements that are present. Based on the extensive research in the area, we are able to calculate a level of risk based on these elements. As I mentioned, ARB has been working closely with OSRAP and IRAP in the development of ANRAM. ANRAM builds on the risk-based approach championed by IRAP and OSRAP. Both approaches use road attribute information to determine crash risk associated with road engineering and operational elements. ANRAM then incorporates locally available crash and volume data to estimate fatal and serious injury crashes across the given road network. Its outputs are focused on priorities of Australian road agencies. Our international colleagues might be interested in this approach being taken within Australia and the road assessment programs in your countries could potentially develop along these lines over time. Both IRAP, OSRAP and ANRAM draw on the large body of work from around the world that provides guidance on crash risk design of design elements and the effectiveness of road engineering treatments. So it's now time for another poll. And this time we would like to ask you whether your jurisdiction has adopted any risk-based approaches to managing road safety. And once again, I'll hand over to Angela to guide you through answering the poll. No worries, Lisa. Okay, so the poll uh, has popped up on your screens there. And if everyone could answer um, as per what is applicable to you. So our answer choices there are, of course, yes, or we're currently looking to incorporate this approach or no. And I can see that just about everyone has voted now. So once again, I'm going to just close that off and share the results with our audience here today. All right, and of course to our presenters. Now, 63% of people have answered yes to that question. So, so what does that sort of say to you? I think uh, what we're seeing is there's been a, a quite a significant change, um, at least in this group of practitioners. Most of them are from Australia. Several years ago, this would have been reversed uh, with majority of uh, jurisdictions not doing much in risk assessment. So this is really welcome. Fantastic. All right. Well, I'll hide that and let you guys um, move on to the next stage of your presentation. Now I'd like to touch on some of the uses of ANRAM. So it can be used to identify and prioritise fatal and serious injury crash risk across a given road network. It can be used to target priority crash types, for instance, if you're particularly interested in runoff road crashes. And it can be used to measure the safety benefits of asset management activities, such as delineation improvements, for example. It can also be used to inform and develop road safety treatments, programs and strategies. It can support decision making and funding of major projects or road improvement programs, for instance, risk assessment of design plans. And it can also help in measuring progress towards safe system infrastructure over time. I'm sure there's many other possible applications for ANRAM that will become over, evident over time and users will you know, discover these over time as they use it. As I've mentioned, a number of jurisdictions have commenced trials of ANRAM and recent applications include a comparison of fatal and serious injury crash savings expected from several alternative road safety improvement strategies. 
for highway corridors. The evaluated strategies ranged from a conventional treatment of blank lengths only to a pilot safe system implementation project aiming to minimise fatal and serious injuries. A number of intermediate strategies were also reviewed. Evaluation included the preliminary economic analysis of each of the alternatives. Another application um, for which ANRAM has been used is in the development of road safety strategy and business case for the deployment of wire rope barriers along rural motorway and highway corridors. This involved prioritising road sections where the barrier should be installed first in order to maximise the safety benefits per dollar spent. A third example is, was uh, when ANRAM was used in the identification of severe crash risk across a regional state road network, including the development of a cost-effective program of treatment packages. This included prioritisation and optimisation of economic benefits. And finally, ANRAM's um, being investigated in relation to the use of road asset inventories to create an ANRAM data set in order to reduce data collection costs. So who should use ANRAM? ANRAM can be very useful to road funding bodies interested in improving safety records of their existing future road assets. It's foremost useful to people who influence road safety strategy, action plans and programs. ANRAM is a useful tool for engineers responsible for day-to-day -day management of the road network as an asset management database, providing a source of investigation level works prioritisation data. For instance, as I mentioned earlier, monitoring of line marking condition. And it's time for another poll. And this time we are looking at whether you have been paying attention. So please let us know what you think ANRAM stands for. Angela? All righty, well, I'll leave that open for our audience to get their answers through. And, and look, I, I suspect that Armadillo um, Choice is going to be a very popular one here. Um, but nonetheless, I, I will leave it open and uh, see what people have to say. Okie dokie. Um, look, the most popular answer choice at this stage coming through uh, is answer choice two. And uh, with that, I will close I will close that poll off and, and share the results. So 93% of people have answered uh, number two, which is fantastic. That is, as far as I'm aware, the correct choice. That's fantastic. And now we'd uh, like to open it up and see whether there's any questions. Um, all right, guys, thank you. We have had a couple of really great questions come through, so thank you to those of you who have sent them. Our first question uh, for the moment is from John, and John's asking, what's involved in trialling ANRAM for local government? Okay, um, I might take that one. I think John will be great to, uh, first of all, catch up with you one-on-one -on -one to go through the detail, but I'll, I'll broadly answer the question. and. The first step would be to collect the data uh, for the road network that you're looking at or part of. Uh, then would be a, a stage of uh, analysing that information in ANRAM and then finally doing some outputs and providing you with information and input into your strategies. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you, John, for asking the question and thanks, Chris, for taking that one. Our next question at the moment is from Martin. Martin is asking, how long do you think it will be before all state and territory governments publish the safety star ratings for their main road network? Who'd like to take this one? Uh, well, in terms of star ratings, star ratings is actually a product of OSRAP. And so, um, so OSRAP you know, produces that information. Um, I'm aware that there was an OSRAP report for all national highways um, that was produced late last year, uh, and that should be available from your motoring body uh, websites. Wonderful. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we don't get to your questions today, um, please don't be disheartened. You can always contact the presenters after the webinar um, and perhaps have a discussion with them we do have a very large audience here today, so we may not get to all the questions. Um, we might take one more question before we move on to uh, the next stage of the presentation. Um, another question from Martin. 
Marlene is asking, uh, New Zealand has a road funding policy, which means that all major road projects are being designed and built to a four-star safety rating. How long do you think it will be before the Commonwealth Government sets a similar policy? Oh, I think this is a, a very tricky question, Martin. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it is something that we would love to see in Australia. However, um, that subject of discussions at this time, we, we just don't know. All right. Well, at the moment, uh, we might just leave it there and move on with the presentation. And I have had uh, a bit of feedback that there's a little bit of feedback when the presenters are talking. So if I could just get your patience for 10 seconds while I change over the microphone, that would be much appreciated. Welcome to GoToWebinar. Webinar is made easy. Okay, and thank you again for your patience there. Just going to test the new mic, and it looks like we're working okay. There we go. So I do apologise for that small interruption there, and I'll let the presenters get on with their presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you, Lisa. I'll talk a little bit about the um, unrammed structure, basically how the model works, what makes it tick, and, uh, and what sort of outputs we get. The picture you see before you shows you very schematically the key modules in UNRAM. The first one is the risk assessment module, which uh, looks mainly at the road information. The second one is the crash prediction model uh, that predicts the fatal or serious injury crashes. Then there's a crash validation module which brings together the predicted and observed crash data. And finally, I'll talk about the UNRAM toolkit, which enables analysis and development of uh, programs, treatment programs. So first of all, the risk assessment module is the first step in the estimation of the severe crash risk. It uses the OSRAP protocols to calculate the relative risk of different types of severe crashes due to the effect of road features, speed, and levels of potentially conflicting traffic. Data inputs into risk assessment module include jurisdiction, road stereotype, the OSRAP coded data set, including the traffic volumes. The output of this module is a series of unram weighting factors, and I'll talk about those in a second. I would like to briefly talk about the unram and OSRAP convergence. UNRAM uses the thank you, Lisa. UNRAM uses the OSRAP risk protocols, and there are many other methodological overlaps between UNRAM and OSRAP although there are essentially two different approaches. The important matter to note is that there is a data compatibility. The input files are virtually identical, and it's easy to reuse the road feature information, the, the same files, between the two systems. This uh, has an effect of uh, saving a lot of money uh, for uh, people involved with both. Also. Because we work together and, and will continue to work together with OSRAP, the maintaining of convergence of the two uh, risk algorithms uh, means that we can grow together and we can share the same research and information into the future. And it's very strong, there is a very strong uh, desire to uh, maintain the same risk algorithms between the two. Here is a picture of the UNRAM risk algorithm, and I don't expect you to uh, be able to read all of this. However, just uh, it's there just to demonstra demonstrate the amount of information uh, contained in this module. Uh, like I said before, UNRAM uh, adopted the risk assessment algorithms um, from uh, from OSRAP, and it uses the same terminology in many uh, cases. Uh, the SRS, the star rating, um, sorry, star rating score, exactly. 
I'll focus briefly on just one element of the algorithm just to further demonstrate what it's made of. This is the algorithm for runoff road um, crashes and it's it consists of the driver side and passenger side. It's basically the same as um, as the uh, OSRAP. The risk scores are made up of the um, risk values for individual design features, the, the road features for each uh, for each side of the road. And we got things like delineation, shoulder, rumble strips, rod condition, curvature, very important things. For each of these elements, um, the guidance is drawn from a large body of research from around the world. It provides guidance on crash risk associated with each of the road design elements and the effectiveness uh, of the engineering treatments. There are 42 attributes currently used in ANRAM and up to 72 may be collected to satisfy the OSRAP specification. This slide shows a little bit of the background behind the, uh, the science that goes into the OSRAP and NANRAM uh, risk factors. So essentially, there have been quite a few studies done. This is an example of horizontal ro road curvature or the, the curve radius. And there have been many studies done on this subject. And in this case, four powerful studies have been combined to pr produce one relationship. And that information was taken to inform the uh, risk values in UNRAM. The same approach has been taken with all other um, risk values used in UNRAM. So next I'm going to talk about the crash prediction module. Okay. This module is a second step in ANRAM and predicts the frequency of severe crashes for each road section. The output of the crash prediction module is predicted fatal and serious injury crashes or FSI crashes over a typical five year period. The predicted FSI crashes reflect the type of road, its length, traffic flow, the relative safety of its road infrastructure, speed, and levels of potentially conflicting traffic. The crash prediction uses the relative safety of the road derived from a risk assessment module and the SPF. There are safe, 30 safety performance functions uh, which were developed for UNRAM. The performance functions cover each of the road stereotypes of which there are six and each of the five main severe crash types. So 30 in total. I will, I will demonstrate how the uh, crash prediction um, process occurs. So first we start with the, uh, with the model, with the SPF. And generally that is the average state of the particular um, road stereotype. And you would expect that the unarmed weighting factor is around 1. If the um, the road features of, of a particular road section are less than uh, less safe than uh, than typically. The um, that causes the unram weighting factor to increase and therefore produces a high predicted FSR. Conversely, when the road features are safer than typically, the unram weighting factor is less than one and results in a lower predicted FSI crash value. This mechanism is used during the development of road improvement programs. Unsafe road features are swapped for safer and the predicted FSI crashes are recalculated resulting in a measurable predicted reduction in crashes. I'll talk now about crash validation module. UNRAM recognizes that, that there may be accuracy issues with both the predicted and observed crash data. To provide the most robust estimate of future severe crash risk, both the predicted and observed FSI crashes are combined. And this is done through an empirical based process 
used to calculate the expected fatal and serious injury crashes. And this output is called UNRAM FSI crashes. And again, I'll briefly demonstrate how this is done. So starting with the predicted FSI crashes, we source from the crash databases the observed FSI crashes for the same road section and then use the empirical, empirical base equation to bring them to get, to, to get them balanced. This gives uh, basically the um, empirical based process gives a greater weight to the observed FSI crashes when that figure is statistically more robust. When this is not the case, a greater weight is assigned to the predicted FSI crashes. And this way, the expected crash figure, the UNRAM FSI, is always based on the most robust input variables. As expected, there are uh, typical um, UNRAM outputs. The, these uh, are the uh, runoff road, head-on, intersection, and other uh, FSI crashes. Uh, we can also calculate a, a total value. The pedestrians have been shaded out at the moment because this option has been, has been switched off in the current version pending an algorithm update. I will now talk about the UNRAM toolkit. So the section analysis part of the toolkit allows closer scrutiny of the UNRAM SRS predicted FSI crashes and individual road attributes. For example, users can observe the, what proportion of the investigated road length had none or narrow or adequate sealed shoulders. Users may derive their own conclusions about which road attributes should be changed in order to improve SRS values and the predicted FSI crash values. Through such direct investigation, users can easily define the type of mass treatments which may be required to treat the identified high-risk roads. Here we have an, an example showing the UNRAM SRS scores for a particular urban road. And we can see the intersection ahead contributes to the highest proportion of the score, which is shown in green. There are, there are other outputs in a section analysis. Uh, in this example, the user can observe how SRS crash risk fluctuates along the chainage, along the length of the road section. It is clearly visible, for example, in here, that the main component of the, um, of the risk comes from the intersections where you can see the green spikes. The gray spikes shown underneath the green are the other uh, crash risks and these mainly comprise of rear enders and side, side swaps. Again, quite common at intersections. Here is another output uh, from section analysis and it shows a comparison of FSI crashes for the same locations. It is clear that the overall numbers of predicted and observed crashes were similar. In this case, UNRAM estimated a minor occurrence of the head-on FSI crashes. It's a decimal value and it's shown in purple, although this did not occur in reality. And this is an important feature of UNRAM because it will basically estimate the risk of a crash occurring, uh, but the statistical vari variability of observed crashes might not pick this up. So UNRAM will pick up the risk, whereas the actual crash history may not. Another feature of the toolkit is road improvement program development. Having analyzed the road network using section analysis, users can then create a hypo hypothetical works program improving the most risk-critical road features. This part of the toolkit allows for a logically structured input of treatments. For example, provision of sealed shoulders, safety barriers, and intersection improvements. The users are prompted for cost estimates for each treatment. The toolkit processes these inputs to produce the expected crash modification factors, UNRAM FSI crash savings, 
and program level benefit cost ratios. The toolkit can be used in this way to treat a road section, a whole route or a whole road network. It can be used to drive local, state or nationwide road safety improvement programs. And now is it time for a poll. worries at all. So the, the question, ladies and gentlemen, as you will see pop up on your screen there, is of course, what do you think are the top three features of ANRAM? Now you have the option here of, of selecting obviously your, your top three choices, so please do and send them through. Might leave that open for a, a little bit longer this time because it is a, it's a, a multiple choice, multiple choice question. And, um, but I, I can see that many people are already getting their votes in. And uh, just while we wait on those votes, I will reiterate at this point that we are recording today's webinar, so there's no need to take notes frantically or, or anything of the sort. We will be sending out the recording as well as the presentation material. Uh, if you would all just keep an eye on your emails after the webinar. Okie dokie, well I can see that uh, many people have voted now, so I will close and share those results. And uh, to the presenters, we have 92% uh, of people answered uh, the toolkit answer as their, as their preferred, followed by the FSI crash estimation and also the risk scores. Uh, so, so what do those results sort of say to you? Is that what you were expecting to see, or...? I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and very pleased, because the whole point of UNRAM was that it was developed to serve the Australian road agencies and to meet the, the needs in terms of program development in, in road safety. Uh, so I'm really glad to see that a lot of people here uh, believe the toolkit is, is important, because that's exactly what it does. The other two... Um, answers which were head to head, which is the FSI crash prediction and the risk scores are also very high, which is precisely what's at the heart of the uh, UNRAM engine. So I think, uh, I think we uh, would hit gold here. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's what we like to hear. So thank you everyone for uh, voting there and of course your, your answers provide us a lot of valuable feedback. So thank you. Alrighty. Uh, so question time again, um, and thank you everyone. We, we've got a very active audience today, which is fantastic. It's what we like to see. Um, we have a question here from Mark. Mark is asking, does the model consider railway level crossings and bus stops? Right. Uh, I can un answer the, the railway crossings. Uh, they are part of the risk algorithm. Um, I cannot recall off the top of my head if there are bus stops. I, I've no. never seen them. No. 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 no bus stops. No bus stops. No bus stops. But it's definitely something we could. That's something we could take up. Um, we could refer to the technical working Second, group yeah. and um, see whether they had agreement about that being incorporated going yeah. forward. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Much appreciated. And uh, another question from Santosh. Santosh is asking, how is net risk related to ANRAM? Ah, oh, yes. Um, net risk was developed uh, spe specifically for use in Queensland uh, some years ago, and it has a number of pa parallels to UNRAM. However, it is very much uh, a, a much simpler system, not, not as refined, and it was really focused on identification of crash risk and then relied on uh, site inspections to determine the um, the treatments. So it's kind of like a, like a, a much older uh, approach, and but it definitely informed the development of both uh, OSRAP and, and UNRAM. It, it was very successful in Queensland. Okie dokie, that's great. And a uh, question here from Damon. Damon is asking, has anyone trialled uh, defaulting some data fields to reduce uh, collection cost? Okay, um, I'm not aware of that being done. No, and again, this is something um, that we've talked about briefly and again, something that we um, considered would definitely be need to be referred mm. to the technical working group um, 
because in particular um, it's been suggested that a simplified approach might be appropriate particularly for local government and so but we need to get the buy-in of the technical working group you know to, to confirm the way forward on how to address this issue. Yep. Okay, fantastic. And another question here from uh, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Jessica is asking who will get access to the toolkit? Will it uh, only be released to government agencies? Um, that's something that we're uh, working through at the moment. Uh, basically, uh, UNRAM was developed for Australian road agencies, so for local and state government. However, we have a governance group that's uh, starting its work, and this sort of, this sort of question we put to them. Uh, there are a number of um, things to consider in, in making such a de decision. Uh, some of them include, for example, um, distribution of uh, intellectual property and so on because we have uh, benefited greatly from uh, OSRAP's work so um, th there are some, some of the issues to work through in, in arriving at the, at the right decision. No worries at all. Well we might just do one more question for the moment and uh, then perhaps uh, we'll take some more at the end. Uh, we have a question here from Doug. Thank you Doug. He's asking when do you envisage ANRAM replacing the Black Spot program? Uh, I, I don't think, think yeah. it will replace the no. Black Spot program for quite some time, um, not in the foreseeable future, because I know lots of jurisdictions still have plenty of Black Spots. <laughs> I've got a smart answer uh, to that. Oh, go for it, When Chris. we get rid of Black Spots. <laughs> That's, that is exactly the answer. When we get rid of Black Spots, we might not have a Black Spot program anymore. I, I think it's very much about the two approaches coexisting into foreseeable future, but the, the, the focus has changed. Now we can address a lot more of the safety problem than with the Black Spot program alone. All right, fair enough. Not a worry then. How about we, uh, we move on with the presentation? And, and thank you to those of you who have sent your questions. Okay. So I'll talk briefly about the next steps on the UNRAM journey. A number of jurisdictions have commenced trials or pilot projects with other jurisdictions preparing to undertake such uh, projects. UNRAM is currently available for trial by state and local agencies and we encourage anyone interested in undertaking a trial to get in touch with us. One point to note is that the current version of UNRAM, version 1, is nationally calibrated using a limited data set that was available to us during UNRAM's development. Future refinement of UNRAM will include calibration using larger data sets from the current and future trials of UNRAM. The more calibrated the, um, the model is, the, the, the better, the truer the results. A feedback re received from the trials will inform development and features to be considered for future UNRA versions. What, what are the next steps? Um, the final project outputs are just currently going through final stages of Austro's endorsement and we expect the UNRA report to be published very soon. And that is normally uh, distributed through Roadwatch, so watch out for that uh, Austro's uh, newsletter. As this is the output of the Austro's project, jurisdictions have the ownership of it, so we anticipate that UNRAM will be gradually implemented nationally by the road agencies. Future UNRAM developments will be directed through the governance group and the technical working group, which involve representatives from jurisdictions as well as OSRA and from ARP. Availability of UNRAM to wider industry and our international colleagues will be advised through these groups. As noted in the previous slide, future developments will be directed through those groups. Based on the feedback received to date, some future actions that may be considered include possible incorporation of, uh, of UNRAM into IRAP software platform which would ensure ongoing alignment uh, of our algorithms. Consideration of tailored approach for local government and a range of other ideas uh, and amendments suggested by, by current users. In addition, road safety improvement programs may consider using UNRAM to, to direct funding to address highest risk sections on the road network. 
And here we have another poll. What do you see as benefits of using UNRAM by your organization? All righty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a, an open-ended question, of course, so we'll get you to type in your responses into uh, the questions box, and once we receive them at our end, we'll uh, have a little discussion with the presenters. Um, I guess while we're waiting for those uh, results to start coming in, um, perhaps, Lisa, what do you think um, might be a common, a common response here? Oh, I think uh, there might be a range of responses. Um, I think, you know, from the early trials that we've seen to date, um, there's been quite a range of, of uses. So that will reflect um, how different jurisdictions will see it as a benefit. So, you know, of course, in helping estimate the crash risk on the network, I, I guess I speculate um, whether um, over time, as jurisdictions have historical information on ANRAM assessments, whether they will, you know, use that to look at how their crash pro risk profile has changed on our networks over time, um, and whether that will be of interest to them. Um, Chris, I don't know, do you have any thoughts? Oh, look, every every trial we've seen so far has um, has focused on different uses of ANRAM and different benefits. I think one that we would like to see, for example, is use of UNRAM to measure progression towards safe system. Mm. So, for example, tracking presence of certain road features which are so associated with minimization of fatal and serious injuries, such as wire or barriers, and taking a snapshot of the network every few years and then measuring those KPIs using UNRAM. Okay, well we have all of a sudden now been inundated with responses, so I'll get through a couple of these. Uh, Matthew saying, uh, estimating the contribution of the road attributes to the risk and severity of a crash and rating that safety aspect of the road. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, another response from Michael. Uh, improved route assessment for heavy and in particular dangerous goods vehicles, uh, ability to reduce risk of road transport, commercial and private, um, as the size of the road freight task increases. Mm. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Doug saying the application to local government low volume roads so that the cost effective treatments can be applied across the whole network, i.e. safer uh, speed limits. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Kirsty, greater identification of risk as long as people don't use it in isolation and do compare uh, to where the crashes are actually happening. Risky sections may be risky but uh, experience no crashes because people drive accordingly. Mm. Great. Alrighty. Um, a few more responses have come through there but um, we might uh, perhaps uh, discuss those later on. I think we'd like to collate them if possible yeah, uh, as input from uh, from this workshop for the further development of UNRAM. This is very valuable. Absolutely. Um, we will do that. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, just so you're aware, at the end of the webinar you'll also receive a, uh, a survey pop-up on your screen as you leave the webinar. And that's also a great opportunity to, to give us feedback as well. So please don't be shy. Uh, let us know your thoughts and we'd, we'd be very happy to hear from you. Alrighty, uh, Chris, back yep. to you. Yeah, building on that, I'd like to uh, invite you to join the UNRAM hub to come and visit us. It's coming soon, uh, I think it's a matter of, of days or maybe a week or so. And this is part of the ARB website where we've set aside space just to deal with UNRAM and supporting the users. So there are a number of fact sheets available there. Uh, there, is a, there will be a user guide and some frequently asked questions. Uh, I'm, Lisa, I'm, I'm looking at some of the, the questions that were raised today and I think that might, will be a good seed for some of the FAQs that we might, uh, That's exactly might right. uh, add to the existing list. Um, you can contact us directly through our pretty easy, through a website, or if you have our contact details. Um, it's also quite important to us that based on your feedback and responses today, including all the wonderful questions, we'd like to uh, look at developing a training uh, package on user of, of UNRAM to, to best suit the needs of the users. 
So, are there any aspects in particular that you'd like uh, further information on, or, or, or perhaps to assist you with practical implementation of Anram? Please get in touch with us, and we'll be very happy to um, to work on such a package. Okay. Then any right, yeah, um, here? We, we have lots of questions, and I'm actually not sure necessarily that we're going to get through all of these, but uh, we'll do our best, ladies and gentlemen. And as I said, feel free to contact the presenters after the webinar if we have uh, run out of time and, and not been able to address your question. Um, we might start with a question from Damon. Uh, Damon's asking, given that ANRAM is a network level tool, what is the minimum road section length appropriate for analysis? Okay, um, I think we're still determining this in practice. However, I would, I would say uh, about three kilometers is probably uh, okay, but with that um, one would have to perhaps temper some of the expectations relating to precision of outcomes. Um, the accuracy and precision uh, vary with size of analysis. So, yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. We, we yet to test it. Um, it certainly works well for a particular route. We've done the sort of analysis and, and got fantastic results. Yeah, so route level of a few hundred kilometres and yeah, things like yeah. that we've done. And yeah, that's even, been quite Even the analysis we've done between towns, they were of, of 20, 30 kilometres, they right. were very sensible results from that. That's right. Yeah. 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 So hopefully that helps you, but uh, stay tuned because uh, I think we're all learning on this journey together. Yeah, we're happy to test those the theories. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, another question from Colin. Colin's asking, or he's saying, I see you have a skip resistance in the model. How do you deal with the change in skip resistance over time? Okay. Well, I guess it goes to the basic assumption of this sort of models, um, that it, it is based on a snapshot of the network at a given time. And that would represent, that would translate a certain risk score in relation to skid resistance. So if a survey, if a video survey is repeated, say, two years later, and the same rod section is, uh, has been improved uh, or has decayed, then that, um, that risk level would change. And then you can uh, observe the change in, in the risk scores and, and changes in predicted FSI crashes. Okay, a question from Paul. Uh, Paul's asking, can the tool be automated to run on all intersections or road sections across the network? Or does it need to be run on individual targeted locations? Oh no, it's definitely uh, a network tool. So it, uh, when data is collected, it's, it's collected, generally speaking, uh, for a road from A to B or, or a collection of roads. Um, every, usually the, the video is collected every 10 meters. Um, the basic analysis occurs, is aggregated to 100 meter sections, uh, segments. Um, so yeah, so I think to answer your question, um, it, it is not so much a detailed tool, but a root tool. So you, you'd be picking up presence of unsafe intersections uh, and also the number along, uh, along the route. Um, I hope, I hope that answers the question. Absolutely, but of course they can uh, contact you for yeah, a chat uh, afterwards, Chris, if, uh, if they'd like to discuss that further. And another question uh, from Doug. Doug's asking, how will ANRAM be distributed and will there be cost to the road agencies? Mm -hmm. Well, um, the, the, the parties that can participate in, in current trials, uh, there is no cost to them. This is uh, basically for Ostrod's members. Um, we're happy just if you contact us, so we'll get you the latest copy. Um, we, um, because this is a continuous improvement um, sort of thing, we constantly will be updating uh, UNRAM as as various things come to the um, uh, come to us. So yeah, just just get in touch with us, and we'll fix you up. And also, uh, we were able to provide a little bit of uh, support um, to get you going. Um, however. To do a trial will probably require some investment from, from the road agency because there are various costs. Okay, um, uh, sorry, just lost my place with the questions. 
Um, question here from Naveen. Thank you, Naveen. What are the statistical methodologies? Uh, sorry, methodologies that is best suited to build crush prediction models. Oh, great! Have we got the next five hours? <laughs> I'm really happy to talk about it. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Um, look. Uh, well, we don't, it, we that, don't have five no, hours. No, no, no. Um, look, it basically. I mean, crash prediction models are usually done through, um, well, the, the methods used are, are regression models, that's called regression models with uh, multivariate analysis and, you know, they either typically are Poisson models or negative binomial models and that's probably all, all I can say right now. There's a, a huge body of literature about this and a number of uh, seminal books which um, like Ezra Howard's books, for example, are, are really good on that. And great amount of method methodologies can be derived from um, accident analysis, analysis and prevention or the TRB uh, papers. So I'd, I'd probably direct you there. All right, and um, not a problem there. A question from Kirsty. Thank you, Kirsty. Uh, she's asking uh, if it's a network level tool. How does this lead to implement treatments? For example, barrier treatments are unlikely to be put in place for a three kilometre length. Uh, so, I think if I've interpreted your question correctly, um, it helps assess risk across the network, but um, as you look at that network, you can see the higher risk sections, so it might be a three kilometre high risk section, you know, along a whole route for instance. And so that helps you decide um, where to put the treatments. And depending on uh, what the safety deficiency is, so if it happens to be a cliff right next to the road, you might need to put a barrier in. Hopefully there's already the barrier if there's a cliff. Um, so, so basically at the network level, um, you get a risk score, but you can also interrogate the information to see the risk profile along the route or the network that you're assessing and then help drill down to the areas that need further treatment and prioritise those. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add there, Chris? Yeah, yeah, I think so. There are a number of logic rules that can be applied when building a, um, a treatment program and these would form a, like a first, uh, first line kind of um, sense building sense into the um, into the treatment. So for example, if you got three kilometers that uh, of road that require a barrier, you would uh, set it up so that automatically uh, barriers are not put in where there are intersections because there's obviously no you know, senseless sort of thing. Um, so there are there are those little skills and I think that's a subject for, for like a detailed uh, a workshop or sit down with the users as we have with, with a few already and, and go through these practical implementation um, steps um, and then it then becomes quite self-explanatory I think, mm. yeah. All right, well thanks for those questions. We might just take one more uh, before we run out of time. Um, this question is from Matthew. Matthew's asking, how is the risk of a serious crush calculated without taking into account driver behaviour, for example, uh -huh. alcohol, vehicle characteristics or other ephemeral risk factors, for example, sun's glare or smoke mm. or fog? Right. Okay. I, th I think that's, that's a great question. Um, and we, we get that, asked that one quite a bit. We not so much focused on the individual road user's risk at any given time um, where these factors are definitely very strongly present. Um, what, we, what we tend to do, and the, the crash prediction models capture all of these risks co collect, collectively, um, so they are accounted for, so in, in a broad sense, um, however um, we're really much more interested in the in the infrastructure contribution and the speed in contribution and traffic contribution towards the uh, the crush performance. So yeah, I understand what where you're coming from, but it's this is much more about the the road system 
uh, rather than the, the rather than the individual user at any point in time. Okay, um, uh, with that we might conclude today's webinar and I'd like to thank you all of you uh, for joining us today. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there will be a pop-up survey uh, come up on your screen as you leave the webinar and we would be so very grateful if you could leave your honest feedback as this does help shape uh, future training on the topic and um, we really want to tailor this to the needs of our audience. I'd like to thank Lisa and Chris for their time in putting this webinar together and for, of course, presenting it live here today. Um, I know this is their, their baby. They're very excited about it and um, very much welcome your feedback and discussion on it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we'll conclude today's webinar and thank you again for your time. Hopefully you can join us next time as well. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. Let's all go and have a vodka.